Retro games and retro gaming on modern consoles is now more popular than ever. We've seen the ports, the remasters, and collections of older titles being brought back to a modern era. And we've covered some of these techniques on the channel before and how these may be possible. But to quickly recap, if the original source code still exists, it may be as easy as recompiling and retargeting code to modern hardware and providing some quality of life enhancements. Or if the code is not available, reverse engineering techniques may be possible. It's more difficult and certainly can take much longer, but the results can be rewarding. Some titles that have been remastered have been accomplished by pure reverse engineering. Then there's emulation. Building an emulation engine to facilitate the game or games collection, emulation is a proven method to play older games and in many cases are a very accurate representation of the original gameplay experience. Some titles hide the fact that they are actually using emulators by adding in some hardware specific features or changes to the game to make it appear as though they were compiled on the target hardware. But how do you go about adding features to a ROM that's essentially a binary object that cannot be easily modified? The traditional method is to patch the ROM and this is known as ROM hacking. The concept of ROM hacking has been around since the very first days of the home computer. If we consider cheat codes or using a Game Genie or Action Replay to insert codes, it's doing exactly the same thing. However, for ROM hacking, these changes are persistent and have a wide range of use cases. This would cover things like fan translation patches from say Japanese to English. These translations could be quite complex. If the game did not have a English character set built in, the game would require one to be fit in within the limits of the game. Then the translation mapping could occur. Other types of ROM hacking could be for quality of life gameplay changes or simply tile, text or sprite changes. These hacks are done usually via a hex editor and saved within the ROM itself, or a patch that can be applied to the ROM to work around any potential legal issues. ROM hacking is generally the preferred way to do things, however, a patch may have unknown side effects that could cause issues within the game. So I'm going to show you an example of how ROM hacking would work on a binary ROM file itself. And this is only one example. Like I said, there's many different use cases out there. But for this one, what I'm going to do is change the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening logo to say MVG's Awakening instead of Link's Awakening. So how do you do that when you have a ROM file? Well, what you can use is something called a tile editor. And the one that I use is this YYCHR. It takes a whole stack of different formats you can do nes game boy the uh, neo geo pocket the uh, msx the super nes game boy advance this is a really versatile tile and sprite editor that you can use it doesn't handle every scenario because there are some games out there that have protection or they're compressed in some way but it does handle a lot of different use cases so let's go ahead and open up our Link's awakening rom file and I'm going to show you how this will work. Now, when you first load this up, it's all just a mess of characters. You're not really sure what's going on. The first thing you want to do is change the format to the Game Boy. And then as you start scrolling through this ROM file, you'll start to see something that resembles uh, sprites and tiles that are used in the game. Like right there, you can see that that has some feeling that these are actually assets that are used in the game these are tiles so the first thing you want to do is change the color set of this so what i usually do is i'll set this to white and then just set these to different values of gray to kind of to resemble a game boy palette that's better than the one that they've set out for us here and let me uh, change the last one to black there and as you can see now it's looking a lot more like something that resembles a proper tile set so somewhere in this rom there should be the tiles that map to this big logo here so let's go ahead and just keep walking through this there's probably a easier way to do this like using a debugger for example to take you straight there but as you can see here is the logo now let me just change the colors slightly just to get a a better look as you can see there is the Link's awakening logo so what we can do now is i mean this is very very straightforward stuff we can now basically just 
take our pen tool and erase out the word link and put the word MVG in there. So let's go ahead and do that here real quick. There's our MVG awakening. All right, it's it's not very good. It's not very good. Just uh, I'm not a I'm not a graphics guy. So now all we do is if we save, we are committing that change to the ROM file directly. So now if we reload our ROM file and we go to our menu, you can see we have made a change. That is a very crude form of ROM hacking. So Nintendo has been in the news recently with the Mario 3D All-Stars collection running emulated versions of three very, very popular Mario games, Mario 64, Mario Sunshine and Mario Galaxy. And more recently, they just announced the original Fire Emblem game Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light for the Nintendo Switch, which would be a updated version that was translated into English for the first time ever. We know that these games are all running emulation. It's not a huge surprise to hear that being the case. But what's interesting is Nintendo's approach to patching these games to run a English translation or in the case of Mario 64, some of the Switch specific enhancements that were made for the game. Nintendo did not resort to traditional ROM hacking techniques as we just saw. Instead, they utilized a popular scripting language that is known amongst the speedrunning community called Lua. Lua was first implemented on the emulator SNES 9X in 2008. Since then, it's been applied to other emulators that cover the NES, Sega Genesis, Game Boy Advance, PlayStation and more. Lua is a high-level scripting language that provides full control over the emulated system. The user can have full control over many different features. The emulation can be controlled step by step, memory can be peaked and poked, registers can be adjusted, and many other things can be done. All with a simple script that injects itself into the running emulation. All without touching the ROM itself. Nintendo of Europe Division, or NERD, are the team responsible for the emulation that runs Mario 3D All-Stars, the NES and SNES Classic, the Nintendo Switch Online services, and the Fire Emblem 30th Anniversary game. Lua scripting has been used for Super Mario 64 on the Mario 3D All-Stars collection for the Switch-specific changes that were brought to the game, and the English translation in Fire Emblem was also done with Lua scripting. This is clearly a powerful and easier method over traditional ROM hacking to get the same result. So I wanna demonstrate the power and ease of use of Lua scripts when it comes to emulation. Now I'm going to load up Legend of Zelda on the NES and we're going to use the FCEUX emulator which has exceptional scripting abilities with Lua scripts. And what I'm gonna do is walk you through two things that are very, very simple to do and something that I put together probably in about 30 minutes. And look, this is not me being an expert at Lua scripting. In fact, I'm not very good at Lua scripting at all, but I just wanna show you the power of the scripting engine itself. Now, if we go into Lua scripts and I load up a script called let me see if I can find it. And as soon as I run this, watch what happens. Two things that's just happened. The first one is the music in the game started playing in this particular dungeon. And the text has changed to add the letters MVG on the end. So essentially what we've done here is we have basically just patched the text that's being displayed on this game. Now, how is this even possible? Well, the way that I've done this is probably not the right way to do, I guess, text injection or text patching, but it does work for this particular example. And essentially, the letters MVG basically map to the PPU tile set that is found in the NES. So if we look at the letters MVG in our pattern tables here, you can see that the letter M is tile hexadecimal 16, the letter V is tile hexadecimal 1F, and the letter G is tile hexadecimal 10. Now, if we take a look at our Lua script that we wrote earlier, you can see that all I'm essentially doing is just patching those letters in 
those particular locations on the PPU. Pretty simple stuff and not too complicated. Again, it's not the way that you would probably do this if you were actually patching a game to change text like they did in Super Mario 3D All-Stars, for example, but it is one particular possibility. But Nerd did not come up with this idea themselves. The concept of Lua scripts have been around for many, many years across many different emulators, and we just scratched the surface of what's actually possible. I think it's fair to say that Nintendo used the scripting approach to better control their IP. In other words, because no patches are applied directly to the ROM, it means, in the inevitable case of the ROMs being leaked and played on emulators outside the Switch, they would not contain the patches at all, and I believe this was done to better protect their assets. There's also the possibility that ROM hacking could present some unintended side effects on the game itself. Scripting would also help with the QA process. Simply test with the script running and then test without and then compare your results. With ROM hacking, it becomes a much more difficult thing to do. But in conclusion, we've seen that ROM hacking and script injection are two very valid options when it comes to emulation. And if you take a look at any retro collection that's available out there, unless the original source code was made available, one of these two methods were likely used. And as we've seen, you can bring old games using Lua scripts to a more modern audience and have good quality of life enhancements that are applied to the game with just a few scripts. And I think that's quite powerful. And it does leave the original game, the original ROM intact. So there is no issues with, you know, if you're making changes to the ROM that may require many, many hours of QA. I think with Lua scripts, it does simplify the process of testing the game a lot better. But there are my thoughts on the emulation route that Nintendo has gone down. I think Lua scripts and that concept is very interesting to see that Nintendo has embraced this and I think it's going to continue going forward. But let me know what you thought about this in the comments below. Have you had experience with injecting Lua scripts into games, emulators, and what are some of the things that you've done? I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. That will do with this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, leave me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.